high five. Yeah. Uh, on the show today, folks, Seth Rogen is here live. Yeah. 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 We're going to talk about kick ass cars, fighting crime as the Green Hornet, and restricted prescription medicine. Mm. <laughs> Glaucoma fans out there, who's got it? Who wants it? I don't know if you can get it from rubbing eyes, but whatever. <laughs> and today's WTF is a fetish for guys that pop boners during haircuts. Oh! Way to follow that one up. <laughs> don't worry, Candace and I will demonstrate. Oh! Live. Oh! The, the, well, demonstrate the haircut, not the barber's pole. My uh, haircut, y'all, yeah. okay. <laughs> Then Hayslip gets behind the wheel of Motor Trend's car of the year, the Chevy Volt. Yeah, yeah. She'll get a 60 mile driving tour of San Francisco and not use a drop of gas. What? 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 what is this? The future? And then Chris Hardwick's here. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you with that. Thanks. Future! And then Chris Hardwick's here with Google's latest attempt at a phone. Oh. The Samsung Nexus S has something called near field communication. Find out what that is and why it's cool and gadget prawn. But first, it's time to peel back the curtains of the interweb. We're going around the net. Okay. <laughs> to turn the sexy up to 11 in here, Candace. Yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, my skin's <laughs> acting up. Oh, Eczema. Who wants to get their nails in this? <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. Oh, shut up. You'd line up. <laughs> and I would cut you. Uh, today's number five takes us into the complex interpersonal relationships of what appears to be the lamest <laughs> band in Eastern Europe. The occasional showboat and guitar solo is an important part of any band's work. But if you try to solo and you suck, there are going to be some consequences. <laughs> There. I don't know. I've done that to friends when they fail at rock band at my house, so <laughs> it's totally justified, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, I still don't realize what that was. I, I can't oh, I'll tell you what that was. What? That was guitar <laughs> Send the letters to her. <laughs> and at number four today, a young man is deeply sedated for a little oral surgery in the dentist's office. <laughs> <Get tarted>. uh, <laughs> but we can guess what he's dreaming about, and no, it's it's not that. <laughs> Sleeping? What, no, he was in that, that sweet spot oh, that where you, yeah, oh, okay. you want to be in before the cops come to the park. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> High school memories. Um, but now we know that when you're unconscious, your dentist is filming you, so that's confirmed at least. But at least he wasn't dreaming that he was in a hot dog eating contest. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you look at me when... Never mind. Uh, and at number three today, sometimes a good viral video is like a magic trick. For example, this clip of an Irish step dancing troupe features both traditional lilting tunes and a classic misdirect to draw your eyes away from the vanishing act taking place on the right side of your screen. When Nana's had enough Irish step dancing, she's had enough. <laughs> Today's number two item is a special health bulletin from Dr. Joseph Kramer, Ph.D. Are you familiar with the practice of anal breathing? Uh, no, and I don't really Too know. Too bad. Let's see I it. Until I was 30 years old, I hated my <laughs> hole. 
I was so chronically tense that I had non-stop inflamed hemorrhoids. Not fun. Twice I even had surgery on my asshole. If you do a hundred anal breaths a day, you will start to let go of anal tension. But if you're interested in high levels of well-being, I recommend 500 to 1,000 anal breaths a day. <laughs> How long before you get anally winded? Like, we just... Uh, it's just... No, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to think about that. It, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, no. but it was kind of worse in a way I wasn't expecting. Well, you, you do have to be careful because if you anal breathe too hard, it'll cause anal coughing. And that, oh. no, I'm serious, worse than it sounds, it is a total bummer to clean up. Oh, Seriously. Kevin, that's gross. Maybe they were just, uh, just got to let it out in a little... Just a little... Really? Just that's little all you got? What's, what do you mean, that's all I got? That's all you got. Oh, don't... Oh, please, please, by all means, princess. <laughs> That was, we just did that on TV? I'm sorry, Granny and Granddaddy. <laughs> to be fair, the front door sounds the same sometimes. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. Little WD-40. <laughs> Fix that red, oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Day three. <laughs> oh. Sorry, Grandma and Grandpa. It's Granny and Granddaddy. <laughs> Sorry, Granny Granddaddy. <laughs> Still ahead, the worst start to a race ever captured on video. Yay! Today's number one round the net is coming up right after this. I, lo I love you and I love, I love Granny and Granddaddy. I know, I love Granny and Granddaddy. Okay, I Actually, it does get much worse than that. Uh, today's WTF is about sexual arousal by haircuts. Oh. Okay. So, can we just watch ATN again? No, no, we got the haircut thing. Here it is. Are you sure? Yep. Ah, it's a brand new year, which means it's time to clean up, slim down, and get a haircut. But while some people are content with a simple trim, others take extreme pleasure in buzzing it all off. Yep, it's the haircut fetish. Now excuse us while we ask, what the f***? Last year we learned you on trichophilia, the obsession with long hair, as well as perming and hair coloring. But the haircut fetish focuses on the other side of the spectrum, short hair, and the act of cutting it. From a head full of hair to a number one buzz cut, this fetish manifests as a desire to see head hair being cut or shaved. While most of these cuts are consensual, sometimes this fetish does extend to the desire of witnessing forced haircuts, like for punishment or military inductions. Whether it's an undercut, bowl cut, or clean shave, the typical haircut fetishist enjoys the very sound of scissors clipping hair. And of course, the swish of a razor blade across a bald head. Many haircut fetishists, both male and female, claim that their fetish began when their own hair was unwillingly cut short during childhood or puberty. But psychologists say that many of these enthusiasts simply enjoy the manly or boyish look of a short haircut. There were even a few short-lived American haircut fetish magazines, including The Razor's Edge, The Yankee Clipper, and The Bald Truth, which were all published in the latter part of the 20th century. By 2001, dozens of haircut fetish websites were already prevalent, like Extreme Haircut, Bald Girls, and CutsCuts.com, which now offers clipping and shaving videos for an average 10 bucks per download. Today, there are more than 200 related videos on YouTube alone, coming from dozens of dedicated channels, like the channel Bald Chicks, which also offers previews of the Half Shave and, of course, the famous Chicken Crest. 
But the pinnacle of this fetish's limelight was in 2003, when California officials arrested a man they identified as the notorious Haircut Bandit, who allegedly chopped hanks of hair from the heads of nine victims without their consent. After raiding his home, police found 15 neatly severed ponytails lined up across his wooden floors. So if you're looking to shear some locks, or you simply want to go Britney on a head or two, go for it. No one's stopping you. Just make sure you have consent, and don't mind us when we ask, what the f***? You, you know that means we gotta do it. So, it's time to get our hair fetish on. Who wants us to shave their heads? Oh. That's interesting there. How about those two? Which two? I don't know which two. Those two with the capes on. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, you two with the capes. Yeah, that's a lot easier. <laughs> Hi, Nick. Hi, Derek. <laughs> And now you guys look like you could use some trim. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I've never shaved a man before. <laughs> Shall we? Ready? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Chunk out of that one. Good. I'm, I'm, going good. For the, I'm going for the headband. That's all I'm going for. There. Oh, that is just. I'm just nicking it. I think mine is broken. Oh, this yeah, is... I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Keep going. Just... I really, just, please don't encourage me. Please don't. Please Should don't talk. Oh, please don't walk me through it. <laughs> if anything, resist. Oh. It's broken. Mine is broken. <laughs> right, here, here, get it, get on in there. You guys Ew. don't mind if we mix, we mix hairs, Why? right? I mean, you guys are totally... Go right ahead. You guys are totally... You've been tested, right? Well, this is compelling. Sure. Maybe I'm just not good at it. <laughs> it um, stopped. We're having so much fun. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I had to say that to get to the real words. Um, why don't you guys tell the viewers what's coming up next? Still ahead. We'll hear from a hacker that cracked the PS3 in the loop. Yay! And find out what it's like to have Sony release the hounds on you. And later, Seth Rogen will be here live to talk about kicking ass in the Green Hornet and possibly learn us about some medicinal Mary Jane. of the new Spider-Man that was that. just released. Yeah. Andrew Garfield stars as Peter Parker in 3D next year, uh, and, and that's what it looks like. So there you go. We just saved you a click on a web page. <laughs> so enough of that. Now the gas prices are so supposedly jumping to five bucks a gallon by 2012. I think it's time that everybody go out and actually buy a rickshaw. Mm -hmm. Or you could do what Allison Hayslip did and be one of the first people on earth to test drive the Chevy Volt. Rickshaw. You know, these days, a buck fifty doesn't even get you a can of soda. But you know what it does get you? A daily emissions-free ride in this, the all-new electric Chevy Volt. The highly anticipated Chevy Volt is finally here. It's the world's first mass-produced electric vehicle. Let's see if it lives up to the hype. So one of the most pivotal selling points for this car, I'm going to say, is probably the fact that you can drive it for a buck fifty a day. So what does that mean? The car charges in a regular household outlet. The cord just plugs in, charges up like any other appliance, and the national average to recharge the car fully is about a buck fifty a day. All car nuts love to know what is under the hood. The Volt drives with an electric motor. It is an electric vehicle all the time. The equivalent horsepower of the electric motor is about 150, 160 horsepower. When the battery is depleted, the car has a built-in backup generator that runs on gasoline that will keep you from getting stranded if you can't recharge. On full charge, the Voltec propulsion system delivers between 25 and 50 miles of electric driving. So if you recharge every day, you'll never use gasoline in this car. This is a regular household plug. Yes. Plugs into any household outlet. Look at plugs that. Plugs in right here. That's not for gas. That's for the electricity. Eight hours later, you got a full tank. What went into the styling of the Volt? Well, first and foremost is aerodynamics. You have to have a car that just glides through the air, and this car does have one of the lowest coefficient of drags of any of the cars that we've done. We made it look sexy. It looks good. It is a very sexy car. 
There are two instrument displays that you can customize, and in addition, a 30 gig hard drive to download your favorite tunes. With the use of an iPhone or Android, you can control every feature on this car but the driving. That's where I come in. Let's get her started. This green ball in the center, it tells you when the car is operating at peak efficiency. It's kind of like a video game between where you're accelerating the correct time and braking at the correct time to keep it right in the center. So your car's kind of interactive, it's fun. They're not the only one who's green on this road. So it's got this really sweet touchscreen control panel up here where you can do your climate control, you can even do the radio up here, you can listen to sweet jams like watercolors? No, I don't think so. Thankfully, it also has a USB port so you can play your own music. The Volt also comes with a nav system that's voice operated. Navigation destination. Please say city name. Weed, California. Who needs it? Here is a green vehicle that is shockingly fun to drive and is loaded with all the coolest features. The Chevy Volt definitely lives up to its name. It's electric. You know we'll also carry you around the city without gas? Interns. Oh. And that's why there's a class action lawsuit against me. <laughs> now over to Kevin. <laughs> Hi. Uh, in December, the PS3 got hacked, and now Sony is taking legal action against one of the hackers, and the fallout could be huge. From decrypting DVDs to jailbreaking iPads, hackers have proven that if it's locked down, unlocking it is just a matter of time, and few people do it better than George Hotz, a.k.a. GeoHot. George was the first person on Earth to jailbreak Apple's iPhone, enabling features like tethering and video recording. At the time, this kind of iPhone hacking was illegal, but a recent update to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA, has given us the legal right to jailbreak our phones. Recently, George turned his attention to the PS3 after a software update locked down the PlayStation 3's operating system. He succeeded, re-enabling PS3 support for unapproved software, including emulators and pirated games. This week, George released the PS3 jailbreak code on his site, and Sony fought back, filing a lawsuit. Sony wants the courts to block George from publishing his jailbreak code and is asking for all copies of it to be wiped off the internet. GeoHot triumphed over Apple, paving the way for your rights. Can he do the same for the PS3? It's the loop. All right, joining me from New York to help us make sense of it all, George Hotz, AKA GeoHot, everyone. Welcome to the show, George. Good to be here. Uh, it's good to have you here. Um, so it's you, George Hotz, against Sony, this giant multinational corporation. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being like making a diamond out of coal, how puckered are you right now? How, how concerned are you when you wake up in the morning? The adrenaline is definitely flowing. Um, you know, it's exciting, it's scary at the same time, but, you know, I'm taking it day by day. Is this your first lawsuit rodeo? Is this the first time you've hopped on the, uh, the saddle? Is. Well, congratulations, First good time, sir. Yeah. Um, we'll see what comes of it. What exactly did you do? I mean, we explained that, that you posted this sort of hack, this firmware update to the PS3. What exactly did you allow uh, users to do to their PS3s? Right now, still legally, you can go to my website, geohot.com, and download my jailbreak for your PS3. And what it lets you do is install homebrew applications. And these are applications that have been developed by anyone. You can go develop your own applications, sure. too, or go download some and put them on your jailbroken PS3. So people can run unsigned code for the first time on, the, on their systems. Well, not for the first time, but at least using your hack, they can. But the issue then becomes yeah. using that hack to potentially, they could also play a pirated game, right? And that's where Sony takes issue. Actually, no. Um, the way piracy was previously done doesn't work in my jailbreak. And I made a you know, specific effort while I was working on this to try to enable homebrew without enabling things I do not support, like piracy. So then what, what do you think the issue is? What exactly are you being sued for here? Making Sony mad. Ah, well, that, that'll do it. Um, <laughs> you were the first person to unlock the iPhone, and then, of course, you went on to jail jailbreak the iPad. Um, why did you turn your attention on the PS3? Were you hacking it uh, simultaneously, in parallel? So initially, what I did last year, I was playing around in other OS, and I couldn't get access to the uh, full access to the video card. 
So, you know, I wanted to get access there. And once I did, I let it go. I didn't play around with Game OS at all. Then, come April, Sony releases an update that removes other OS entirely. And so you, um, you wanted that access, so you ahead. went poking around, and then you decided to release it to the world. Exactly. Well, a federal court has ruled that, that hacking or jailbreaking an iPhone is actually legal in the U.S. So how is hacking the iPhone different from unlocking a PS3? Or is that the question you're asking? That is the question I'm asking. Um, currently, the difference is the DMCA says specifically mobile phones. But, I mean, I think the same precedent should apply. Like, whatever precedent, if they decide phone, it's a closed system where the manufacturer controls all the software that runs on it, and, you know... If you can uh, jailbreak one closed system, why can't you jailbreak another? All right. Excellent question. I'm sure your lawyers will ask the same. Ha have, have you sought legal counsel? Have people emailed you offering legal advice or services? I have. You know, a lot of people, a lot of random people have been emailing me with legal advice. But I've been speaking with two lawyers, uh, Yasha and Stuart, who've been, uh, you know, helping me fight Sony initially in California. And, uh, yeah. And so well, if you, if you win, then, that. like you said, the, the DMCA right now applies to closed systems, i.e. phones in this case. So if you win, does, does that mean it could set precedent and uh, apply that same uh, right to hack or right to jailbreak or right to update firmware across all devices? Do you see that being a, a fallout from this case? Definitely. I think this case is about a lot more than what I did and me. It's about whether, whether you really own that device that you purchased. And uh, hypothetically, let's say you win this David versus Goliath battle. Who or, or what is next on your, your hit list? I, I like to think that you have a list pasted to a wall and you're just crossing it down of corporations to anger and lawyers to hire. What, what's next? Uh, when does the PSP2 come out? <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, I'm now, kidding, I'm kidding. Now you're just poking sticks, but uh, we, we appreciate um, your time. And uh, well, well, please, if you have something that's coming up next, what is it? Working on a couple contract projects now, you know. When they put something out, I'll take a look at it. That doesn't sound nearly as scandalous, but I wish you the best of luck. George Hotch, thank you so much for joining us and keeping us in the loop. Geo Hots, everyone. Thank you. And now let's go over to Candace. Guess what? It's Viewer Requested Phones Week. Hey, let's get some near field communication going with Chris Hardwick. Yes. I approve of that. Finally, a phone we can wave at things. Yay. The new Google, Google is going to give the Nexus phone another go with the Samsung Nexus S. Sporting a 4-inch Super AMOLED curved display, this phone is designed to fit easily in your hand. And since it runs on Android 2.3, you'll have the most streamlined user experience yet. Dual cameras are also included for photos and video conferencing, and you'll get near-field communication capability, all for 200 bucks with a contract. Side note, phone does not do Pilates, Aww. Uh, as would be evidenced in that video. We do all sorts of fun stuff with the devices that they don't actually do, <laughs> other than just look snazzy. Oh, well. The newest Google phone A lot of girls do that to me, <laughs> not surprisingly. Aww. No Pilates. Well, and then on to another topic. I'm used to that. What do you... <laughs> The newest Google phone feels a lot like other Samsung Galaxy S devices we've used. It's just a little thicker than the iPhone, but yeah. uh, still, it's lighter than my phone. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not as large as that it's hot thinner. plate that you have. That you, <laughs> my that, massive thing. Yeah, yeah the Evo. Uh, it feels really lightweight in the hand, um, but do you think it's kind of plasticky? Well, it is plasticky, mainly because it's made out of plastic, but it, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it just feels like a toy in your hand, but that doesn't affect the performance of the phone. It, see, it's got the curved display right there, which is Whoa. supposed to... I know, I guess it's supposed to fit your face better, because faces are curved, it turns out, but yeah. I, I didn't, really, didn't really notice a big, big difference. Uh, then, then the caveman flat-fronted phone I've been no. using. Uh, there's no LED notification on here. A lot of the Android phones, will have, like a green light will come on uh -huh. uh, when you have a text or something, and, the, and this, this, they did not do that. But I like that. You do like that? I like that they don't have it. Why? Because it keeps me up at night. Well, you're, you don't wear oh, your wait. phone like a sleep mask. <laughs> what are you? No, but it's right next to my bed, and I'll, I'll see the green flashing, and I'm like, I don't care if someone's called or whatever. I just want to sleep. A little, little late-night booty then... text? Yeah, <laughs> Candace Bailey. Uh, <laughs> getting it. She has a boyfriend. Come on, guys. He's texting her from the other room, because they don't sleep together because they're not married yet. All right. <laughs> Only 16... <laughs> <laughs> Only 16. That's right. Exactly. Only six. Your parents are watching the first week, right? And grandparents. Uh, only 16 <laughs> gigs of stuff. Come on, honey, give it up. It's the 2000s. Uh, <laughs> 
That was me as your grandmother. Okay, uh, there's only 16 gigs of storage of this, but no expansion slot, which is very surprising for an Android phone. So you only get 16 gigs, Aww. and that's it. Well, it's, yeah. it's also got the Super AMOLED display, which we know has amazing contrast and bright colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it looks really vibrant. Uh, the 4-inch screen size is, is just the right amount of real estate that you're going to want. It doesn't quite have the re resolution of a Retina display on an iPhone 4, but it still looks fantastic. still looks fantastic. Now, this is also the first phone with Android 2.3. Mm -hmm. So how much better is this than my Evo that has 2.2? It is incrementally better. Yeah. Uh, they've made a few changes here and there. Like there's an improved keyboard. There's individual word copy and paste. There's also a new app manager. I really actually love the 3D menu. It's, it's sort of a weird Star Wars-y effect. It's got the scrolling icons you can see on the bottom and the yeah, top. Yeah, I like that. It, I like it's, that it kind of like wraps in, into 3D, 3D space. <laughs> uh, the touch screen is also super responsive, except at the very bottom when you're typing in landscape mode. Sometimes it's kind of hard to hit the number key. It doesn't register, but, you know, that's a minor complaint. That happens on my phone, too. Oh, it does? Yeah. All right. Now, can it keep up with other smartphones when launching apps or loading web pages? I have to say, it's one of the fastest that we've we've ever seen. It's almost twice as fast as the iPhone 4 Ooh. when loading up uh, Angry Birds or other apps. Uh, we did have a few issues loading up flash-heavy sites, like G4s, <clears throat> but otherwise, <laughs> it's super uh -oh. quick. It's super quick. It was also got a rear five-megapixel camera as mm -hmm. well as the front-facing one for video. Yeah, they're not, those are not actually not that bad at all. The rear camera takes super great pictures uh, in video. Oh. Uh, uh, and take, any light worked. We wished it would shoot HD, but uh, but it oh, doesn't. Those are some pretty pictures. They are. Oh, that's my dog Scott. <laughs> oh, oh, adorbs. There's tons of photography options. Uh, they like adjustable exposure, white balance. It really feels more like a camera experience. That's great. Front-facing cameras only VGA quality. Any front-facing camera does not make you look good yet. We're not there, uh, so it's not going to blow you away when you're video conferencing. You're still going to look a little grainy. Okay. Well, they also include near-field communication in the mm -hmm. phone. So what can we actually use this for? Nothing yet, because uh, it's, it's America. We don't have that yet. Other countries, they do. NFC is essentially the transfer of, of data wirelessly between two devices that are, that are near each other. Uh, this means that you can read tags from everyday stuff like cereal boxes or T-shirts and store them in your phone. And eventually, we'll actually be able to just pay for stuff wirelessly without our, just using our phones. You can just walk out of the grocery store, and they're like, we got it. Like, you don't uh, even have to. So it's for the future. It's, or, or Korea, which are both the same, because <laughs> uh, they have it, but we don't yet. So, okay. so some. Day. Now you can get it for 200 bucks with a contract at Best Buy, so what are we giving it? All right, I'm giving it a 4 out of 5. Woo! This is one of the best Android phones that we've reviewed. And though I think it is a little expensive at around 200 bucks, uh, especially, since, especially since it's not 4G, but, uh, but 4 out of 5 I think is fair. I think that's fair. Excellent. All right, that's it for hey, the first Gadget Prime hey! together. Hey! Hey! Well done. Thanks, You're welcome. And now over to Kevin. You kids. Uh, parkour is French for fancy walking. And soon, those urban athletes will be wall crawling and property damaging all over your TV. It's Jump City Seattle. Yeah! And it pits four parkour teams against each other to determine whose sneaks leave the best scuff parks on cement. I think that's how they rate them. It's man versus gravity and an all new parkour team competition. Jump City Seattle premieres February 15th right here on the G4. And over to G4TV.com slash Jump City for more. And stay tuned. Seth Rogen, the man known as the Green Hornet, is here right after the break. This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. Listen, um... We don't have a lot of crimes committed here in our studio, aside from the ones against decency and comedy. But today, we should be safe, because the Green Hornet is here. We'll need a car. Hells yes, we'll need a car. With strong weapons. Mm. And armor. Cool rims. Spinning rims. I can do that. You know, I want you to take my hand. I want you to come with me on this adventure. I'll go with you, but I don't want to touch you. Okay, you don't have to take my hand, but will you come with me on this adventure? <laughs> Joining me now, ladies and gentlemen, Seth Rogen is here. Yeah! <laughs> Can you take my hand and come with me through the center? I will take your hand. 
Oh, wow. That's good. Good. I did. I actually did it. There was a moment there. We're now Facebook official. I'll, I'll touch. I'm um, a toucher. Well, good. I, I've heard that about, I've read that exactly. about you. Exactly. They said to keep a distance. I'll go right for it. They, they have a bucket of Purell I'm on the standby. opposite of Howie Mandel. I, just, <laughs> I, I can't help but touch people. You get your yeah. fingers in everything. Exactly. I'm just probing. Including and, the briefcase yeah. girls. Exactly. Yeah. That's why you'll never be on Deal or No Deal. I've, been, I, I, I've never been asked back. Yeah. <laughs> um, I... I, I it's interesting to me, the Green Hornet property, when you decide to take on a film like this, you're basically getting in the whitest stance as possible and asking the internet to kick you in the balls. Kick you in the balls, <laughs> There's yeah. There's no, like, did you, you had to have known that going into it, right? Yeah, we did. Luckily, if, if there's anyone that's not, that, that probably doesn't have that intimidating a kick, it's the internet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, look, look. Let alone yeah. Green Hornet fans. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they can lift their knees anymore, then uh, it's, uh, it's something I should. Uh, <laughs> they do yeah. when going to get they, more jolt exactly, in between Exactly, yeah. Rains. You never know. They can hit me with it, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we knew that people would be skeptical. I mean, we're comic book fans. Sure. We, we, we like to blindly trash things we know nothing about. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of what we do. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we were aware that it would seem crazy, but uh, to us it was pointless to just kind of do a very literal translation of a comic book. Right. I mean, anyone could do that. We wanted to take something that people really didn't know that much about and, and make it our own thing and really make it our own movie. So, uh, yeah, we, we knew people would think it was preposterous and crazy, uh, but most good ideas are when they first kind of right. come into being. Um, I remember when we were writing a weed action movie. That doesn't really sound like a good idea. To most people. <laughs> yeah, Actually, yeah. Wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no turn one's out, like, that sounds fine. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> finally, someone is combining those things. My two favorite so, things, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we're used to our ideas sounding terrible. Uh, when we first present them to people right. and kind of having to prove that they're actually good. So we're, we're pretty comfortable with all that. And, uh, and I, I saw it with an informal focus group. I didn't know what was happening, but like you got me who I confused the Green Hornet with the Lantern with yeah. the uh, Green Acres and the exactly, Green Mile. Yeah. Like, I, I really, I'm, just, I'm not that good as with... As long as it's not the Green Zone. Then no. I think we're good. <laughs> no, no, no. confused with that. Uh, had another friend who had no idea the Green Hornet existed, probably another friend who knew everything about oh, wow. it. Even the uh, iterations of Cato and his oh, backstory. That's amazing. Everything. All three of us left there Smiles on the faces, thumbs up. That's so, awesome. I don't, know, I don't know who you were gunning for, but it's a it's a great great film. Thank you so much. Uh, um, yeah, I really appreciate. And that. it was like, but the the film you you've been involved with it for about the last two years or so. Four years we've oh, been working on years. it. Yeah, okay. that's how long we've been writing. But the film it for. itself has been like twelve years in development. Yeah, it's I think I, Michelle Gondry actually who directed it. It was the first movie he was ever attached to as a director. Fifteen years ago wow. was the Green Hornet. Wow. Yeah. He's uh, done a couple films. I think Netflix, he's done a few uh, since then. Yeah. He, directed he, DVD mostly. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, he managed to <laughs> fill the time. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of very big actors. Uh, associated with the property uh, before me. Um, we had George Clooney, George Mark Clooney, Wahlberg, Mark Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. None of them. None of them are sexy geek icons exactly. like yourself, though. But, uh, yeah, exactly. But uh, I think I'm the next logical name in that list. <laughs> exactly. I think if that was like an SAT style que question, <laughs> right. like, finish this list: Clooney, Gyllenhaal, Wahlberg, the, Rogan. Seth yeah, Rogen for the win, of down. course. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you. I'll Maybe take even Bruce before Falange those other names. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you did. You got you, you 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 beefed up for the role. You got in shape for it. Was Not that... really. I just got in not terrible shape. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was I was the never actually in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> There's no like shirtless. I think Ryan Reynolds is more shirtless in the trailer for the Green Lantern <laughs> than I am in the whole movie for the Green Lantern. So yours was, yeah. yours was uh, your, your fitness goal was get into shape where the doctor wouldn't go. We need to talk about exactly. This. Yeah, get in shape where in a suit and trench coat I look like I'm not in terrible shape. That, that, that's that's you, all I needed. But you pulled it off. Thank uh, you so, very much. So kudos to that. I um, appreciate but, it. Uh, you, you didn't write in any scenes. Uh, obviously shirtless. You also didn't write anything where you're making out with Cameron Diaz. No, I tried. Uh, she uh, <laughs> she has a lot more power than I do on a, on a movie set. That's Did you literally? You had scenes where you you went in for the move? No, she, honestly, no. We, oh, we, we, we 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 thought maybe she should end up with Cato, but she actually, you know, in our attempt to kind of deconstruct a lot of the conventions of these movies, uh, she actually thought it was a better idea to not end up with either of us, which is actually pretty funny. That is true. Yeah, yeah, that is true. So we get to end up with each other. You could have at least said. <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice. You could have at least shot one for the like a Blu-ray extra. Yeah, exactly. You always slip like, one into the radar that Exactly. Way. We're doing an unrated version. <laughs> um, so, uh, of course, a uh, huge fan of Pineapple Express as well. Yeah. 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 
right. I'm assuming you've you've sampled some of the Pineapple Express. I have. It's it's real now. It didn't exist when, when right. we wrote the movie. Right. So we we pioneered a, a, a strain of weed. Were you worried that maybe yeah. were you worried that maybe like some some community college slum was going to call like the pencil shavings Pineapple Express? It's it true. Well, it I had to try just to make sure it was good. Quality because, control. Yeah, exactly. You can. <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think we'll see a, a Green Hornet? I think there should be a Green Hornet weed. It sounds like, you know, if, if anything, if anything yeah. was designed to be a name of a weed, Green Hornet. <laughs> it should be the Green Hornet. Yeah. Uh, sativa or Indica, what would it be? I don't know. Maybe a hybrid because uh, it's that, you know, best of both. It, it, that's good for a wide target audience. You know? <laughs> <laughs> a movie of this size like deserves this a hybrid weed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> a lower budget movie yeah. you could you could Studio qualify. Studio execs it. just high five. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. On their hybrid. Chest. We got everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, also, you, did, you did have everybody in the film. You even had Edward James Olmos. We did have I Edward James yeah. Olmos. Yeah. Yeah. What? We had him on this show, and he was he was captivating to say the least. He came on here and was barking out orders like a space captain, and and we were super proud of it. We were yeah. so happy yeah, to have is, him yeah. here and do it. Was he was he like that at all on set? Or? He was. I think he actually kind of thinks he's like the admiral of a spaceship right? somewhere. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You kind of get that impression where you're like, you know, that show's not real, right? Like, you know. <laughs> This, so say yeah. we all. So say we all. Yeah. <laughs> so say you. It's not yes. real. Yeah, we, we all say it is. Uh, but he was amazing. Yeah, he was. He's in Blade Runner. I mean, he's in so many movies. Yeah. We would always go up and ask him, like, what's it like to be the most influential actor of, of an entire generation? And he'd be like, it's a big responsibility. So, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. Exactly. <laughs> um, and now that the, the film is done, you've been doing the promo circuit like mad. Uh, yes. So thank you for, for limping over the finish line with uh, us. We I'm, appreciate uh, it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but now, <laughs> we're better to limp over the finish but line. <laughs> exactly. But then what is it? Is it back to uh, to weed action films? Is it more promotion for you? Is it going to catch up on some gaming? i got to play video games for around four months there straight. There we go. Yeah. Uh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Do, you, do you have it lined up? I don't. I, I've been playing God of War 3, which is yeah, fun. I've been enjoying that. I have a 3D TV, so any 3D video games that come out. I'll, are you I'll you're get. a fan of 3D? I am a fan of 3D, honestly, as, as most potheads are, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think even, I think even behind the layers of bong resin, yeah, exactly. some of us, we know that... I mean, are, do you wear the glasses? Is I, that... I, I, I sit at home wearing the 3D glasses. <laughs> I already, I, you feel a little... Every once in a while you catch a glimpse of yourself in a mirror. You're like, really? You're, yeah. We're doing this? We're going... <laughs> <laughs> We're going 3D glasses yeah. at home. You but know, in yeah, three years' time, it's going to be left. I went for it. In 3D, I'm going to get them implanted in my brain whenever possible. So <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, you talked uh, extensively about your, your love of medicinal marijuana <laughs> on, uh, on the Howard Stern show, so I didn't know yeah. where to go from there. I thought either, clearly, we got to talk group sex or ecstasy. Exactly. So yeah. uh, <laughs> when they yell cut, what's your, what's your poison? Uh, I don't, you know, I, I, I actually, I think, I think people are very disappointed by how, by how calm I am in real life when they meet me. A lot of guys want to just get out and go roofie some girls together and stuff like that. <laughs> well, but I, don't, I don't, I don't think that's what, exactly, that, well, that's, that's, what that's most not guys quite say, what like, I, yeah, That's literally what people say to me. It's like, let's go roofie some girls oh, together. Okay. I'm like, okay. Like, Gondry, relax. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You gotta do the DVD cut. <laughs> exactly. We have an audio commentary to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know it's an experimental film, Exactly. Yeah. I don't want to go to prison. <laughs> did you, did you? see the the film in 3d did you see your film in 3D? i have seen the movie in 3d and it's was little, it enhanced 3d or it's 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 a little startling to see myself in 3d i'll be totally honest yeah my giant head in 3d uh, <laughs> but you get to see cameron diaz in 3d which is you pretty badass well. yeah which, which, worth worth the price of, the, uh, of admission you yeah. had me at hello again exactly. uh, i gotta tell you from from one of those jaded internet uh nad kicking nerds you, you sold me and a half. It's a great film. It's Thank a lot you so of fun. Much. And I, Thank you. I can't recommend it enough to everybody to go Thank see it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here, man. Seth Rogen! Yeah! Everybody, the Green Hornet is in theaters tomorrow. Go watch it, stoners. And now, back to Candace. Still to come, there's more Attack of the Show after this. Yeah! This portion of Attack of the Show is brought to you by the Green Hornet in theaters tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow on Attack of the Show. Tiffany Smith goes behind the scenes of our epic zombie ninja battle and becomes a zombie pirate. Yar. Then it's the return of Wiffle Bat Fight Club. Four men will enter, but only one will be crowned the WBFC champion. And Allison Hayslip gets up close and personal with Seth Rogen and the Green Hornet's Black Beauty. See it tomorrow. <laughs> Do I, look, do I have the Rogan afterglow? I feel you it. Do. I feel it. it was, I might be pregnant. Interview. Hey! You want some free stuff? Yes! Yeah.
Great. We got you covered. Yesterday, we actually gave away three Extreme Mac Tango TRX iPod and iPhone docks. Can you believe that? We did that on this show. And the winners are Freddie C. of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Yay! Jesus T. of Yonkers, New York, and Robert L. of Wayne, New Jersey. Congratulations! Yay! Kudos. Kudos, today, good folks. One lucky TV junkie will receive this. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Okay. Whoa. Elgato iTV Hybrid and iTV HD DVR. Oh, lovely. The hybrid lets you watch and record cable and, and over-the-air TV shows right on your Mac Very PC. Cool. And the HD DVR connects to a cable or satellite box for watching and recording your favorite shows in full Ooh. HD. By God, these products are from the future! Woo! Uh, we're also sending you these phones. Um... <laughs> We're, we're not kidding. We're sending you these, these stupid phones from our old set. I think they're cool. I hate them. Uh, enter at g4tv.com slash epic giveaway and click the epic giveaway link. Well, that makes sense. Get your entry in between. Where do I click for the epic? Oh, there, I get it now. Uh, January, get your entry in between uh, now and January 14th by 3 p.m. Eastern to be eligible. We'll announce the winner right here on tomorrow's show. It's that easy. Fun shows all week, Miss Bailey. What a roller coaster of a launch week. Mr. Pereira. Uh, if I had to say, have, have a highlight, it would be you, oh, first and foremost. Oh, shucks. Uh, and then if I were, if I were being truthful, Seth Rogen was awesome. Oh, yeah. 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 No, 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 I can't let you finish. I'm just saying that for TV. Uh, it's been a phenomenal week. We still got another show tomorrow. Awesome. So thank you, Candace Bailey, for being 10 kinds of awesome. Oh, thank you, the viewers, for being 11 kinds of awesome.